Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Wee Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let me share this with you. In today's video, you all should leave big white. Why? Well, I'm going to discuss the performance of resale versus new home performance. I'm very sure many of you here will say, Alan, there are so many resale versus new home videos and articles. What makes yours special? Here, I'm not going to cover just the plain vanilla, like the pro and cons. This one is very easy. And I assume most of you will have no. What I want to cover is data, numbers, and most importantly, their performance to date. Sorry folks, this video is, will be very technical and may not be suitable for all. However, if you want to seriously make money in property, you will be good to watch to the end as I will share my opinions on them. In our discussion, I will randomly select three new homes and three resale condos within the same area. I'll compare their past performance from the date they were launched, mainly in 2019, to today, which is in 2024. Without further ado, let's head over to the discussion. The first two condos I want to compare are Kensington Park and Affinity at Rangoon. Kensington Park is a triple nine years leasehold condo with 310 units. They are mainly three and four bedrooms with very spacious floor area. It is also sitting on one of the largest triple nine year site in District 19 that cover close to 500,000 square feet. There are three tower blocks and low rise blocks and townhouses. Let me average out the 2019 data. The average selling price back then was 1128 PSF. In 2024, the average price has shoot up to 1543 PSF. This means prices have appreciated by 37% in the same period. Not too bad, right? At the same time, as I look into the past transaction, one unit caught my attention. This buyer that bought this four-bedroom machine at Shea Huat. How to go wrong at 988 PSF back in 2019? Today, close one eye, easily can sell for 3.4 million or the cool 1.4 million profit. Don't say it is not possible. For your information, a lower floor unit was recently sold for 3.25 million. Anyway, I personally quite like Kensington Park. I think this is a very charming old condo that is very livable. On the other hand, the affinity at Shrangoon is sitting on the previous side of Shrangoon View, HUDC, that was so on block. Oxley and his partners market this project back in 2018. Most of the owners have taken their key and have moved in. These are some of the internal photos of these projects. I will use only the bigger three and four bedroom data in our comparison. Back in 2019, the average selling price then was 1495 PSF. In 2024, the average price is 1721 PSF. This means prices have appreciated by 15% in the past years. Take note, although the affinity has a lower return during the same period, we can see that most of them are making healthy profit. Some of their analyzed return can reach as high as 9.5%. I mean, this is a pretty awesome return. So much about Serangoon, let's go over to the east. I believe more of you following my channel will be familiar with Park Esta. It's located near Yunos MRT station. It used to be on the former Yunos View HUDC that was sold on block to MCL land. They developed it into a 1399 units, 99 years condo development. It was launched back in late 2018. But let us use 2019 data for our study. The average selling price for the bigger unit of more than 1,100 square feet was selling for 1,621 PSF. In 2024, the average price is 2,268 PSF. This means prices have appreciated by 40% in the same period. Impressive! <laughs> Let me share with you the profitable transactions. Most are making easily above 600,000 for the bigger units. They also record an impressive analyzed return. That is why property in Singapore is very strange. You say it is high, it can even go higher. In Hokkien, we call it Ki Holokwa. That is why I always say, the real money is in private. If you can afford to, you should go for it. Here, let's go to another resale condo, not too far away. Sim View is a 99 years leasehold condo developed by Fines Organization, with a lease dated back to 1994. This mean is 30 years old with a balanced lease of 69 years. This condo has 522 units and is near Paleba MRT station. 
Let's trace back its transactions. The average selling price for a bigger unit was 1027 PSF back in 2019. In 2024, the average price increased to 1294 PSF. This means prices have appreciated by 26% during the same period. Not too bad in my opinion, even for the depreciating lease. So next time, don't say resale condo cannot make money. Here, are you curious, what if we compare it against another condo of freehold tenure? Will it fare better? Let's compare it against nearby Butterworth 8, which is a freehold condo with 216 units. It opened in 2004. This means it's about 20 years old. The average selling price for the bigger unit back in 2019 was 1453 PSF. In 2024, the average price increased to 1878 PSF. This means prices have appreciated by 29% during the same period. Interesting, right? I'm very sure many of you here will think that freehold will outperform. It only increased marginally more than the 99 year same view. Anyway, the above is only an example and may not be conclusive due to many variables affecting their visual performance. Next on the list, we shall go to the far west. We will take a look at Whistler Grand. This 99 years condo was developed by CDL and was completed in 2022. There are 716 units. This project was launched in 2019 before COVID-19. The bigger units that measure more than 1,100 square feet are selling at an average price of 1339 PSF. Back then, this was a premium against an older but triple nine years condo located next door. We will come to that later. Today, the average price is trending around 1,008 PSF. This means prices has increased by 34% in just 4 years. I'm very impressed even with this location is not near any MRT station and face the noisy AYE. What is even more astonishing is the profitable transactions. The four bedrooms are making about 500,000 to 600,000 in profit. Amazing, right? Okay, so much about the profit. Let's take a look at the nearby triple nine years, Botania. Botania was also developed by CDL back in 2009. It's on 956 years leasehold from 1928. There are 493 units. The bigger unit that measure more than 1,100 square feet was selling at an average price of 1,231 PSF back in 2019. Today, the average price is transacting around 1,708 PSF. This means prices has increased by 39% in the same period. This also shows that Botania performance is slightly better than Whistler Grand 34% increase. Are you all surprised? Anyway, let me compare it against another older condo, say West Cove condo in the West Coast area. This is an older 99 years condo with its lease starting from 1995. This means it has a balanced lease of 70 years. In 2019, the average price stood at 852 PSF. Today, it's going for 1053 PSF. This means the capital appreciation during the same period is 24%. This also shows if you have bought a resale unit here, your profit will be less if you compare it against a new home. Here, what can we conclude from these three comparisons? Firstly, let us look at affinity. Its performance at 15% was lower than Kensington Park. Why? This is because Kensington Park was definitely undervalued when Affinity was launched at 1,005 PSF. Those savvy enough were quietly scoop up attractive price units. If we compare against Affinity, Park Estar and Whistler Grand, they are launched almost at the same time. It seems Affinity has underperformed. Why? Well, I can only conclude there are many choices in D19, from Wing Thai, the garden residence, to Florence residence, to Riverfront residence, and so on. All these are huge projects. Buyers are spoiled for choice in the resale market. This could also explain its weak performance. However, the upcoming Serangoon North MRT station could be a game changer in the future. As for why Park Estar performed so well, I can only sum up because it is one of the newest condo in the East and near an existing MRT station. This is appealing to buyers, as well as the limited stock back then. As for why Butterworth 8 outperformed slightly to same view, I can only explain because of its freehold tenure. Otherwise, older 99 years condo can still appreciate over time. They offer an affordable alternative to HDB upgraders. On the other hand, Whistler Grand has done well at 34%. 
This is almost on par with the 956 years Botania. As for West Coast, its resale performance is similar to SimView. This means older 99 years condo in our discussion have a mediocre return compared to newer homes. Here, some of you always ask me this question. Can I still make money from new homes today, especially at record prices now? Well, take a look at Affinity, Park Esta and Whistler Grand and others. I can still recall they were all selling at a record prices against their resale counterparts back in 2019. Yet, they are all making huge profit today. However, some of you here will say, Alan, that is COVID year. That is why they all make money. My question to you here is, if that is COVID year, have you taken action then? Or are you still waiting for the big crash? From this simple study, you should show some good resale condo can outperform its newer neighbors. So please don't write off older condos, especially freehold or triple nine years one. Each one of them has their own merits. Most importantly, whether is it new homes or resale condo, are you in the property game to ride the wave together? Are you there to what what? With that, I hope my video has educated, enlightened and empowered you in your housing plans. Hope I have clarified the matter on new and resale once and for all. Hope you enjoy this video and see you soon.